How's it going guys, Flarp here back with another video. Today I'm going to be hitting you guys with the best budget gaming PC build in 2015 for under $400. This build will be able to play just about all of the new titles at pretty high frame rates, so if you guys are interested in learning what is in the build, stay watching. As always, I'm going to have a PC part picker permalink cart down below in the description for you guys to check out if you want to purchase this build. So with that being said, let's get on with the video. First part I picked out is going to be the Intel Pentium G3258 3.2GHz dual core processor. This is going to sound very weak, coming in at only $65 from Outlet PC. However, it is actually a very good CPU for a budget build and it competes very highly. Now, one of the topics that comes up with the great regularity in CPU reviews is whether or not single third performance remains important in the modern age. It's not uncommon for an AMD fan to show up and declare that no, thanks to multi-threading and HSA, single thread performance is utterly dead, or at least it will be in the near future. There's no doubt that multi-threading can provide a significant performance boost in many applications. In some tests, AMD remains competitive for precisely this reason. What people forget, however, is that adding more threads only improves performance from your single threaded baseline. In several of the applications TR tests, the Pentium G3258 punches far above its weight class, beating past the quad-core AMD processors when both solutions are overclocked. In Crisis 3, the situation persisted. Not only did the G3258 outperform the FX8350 when overclocked to 4.8 GHz, it nearly kept pace with Intel's entire stable of core i7 processors. On screen now is a graph of the performance of the G3258 against many other leading CPUs that you would find in a budget gaming PC build, as well as high-end PC builds. Now that we have that out of the way, we're going to move on to the motherboard. I picked up the MSI H81M P33 Micro ATX LGA1150 motherboard coming at 43.98 from Newegg. This motherboard is a Micro ATX motherboard, however, it will do the job just fine for our build. It is relatively cheap, actually very cheap, and it has good reviews. It has two 240-pin DIMM slots, which will be able to house your two sticks of 4GB of g scale Ripjaws X series RAM, harnessing dual-channel DDR3. I was able to fit this into the build because RAM has dropped in price significantly in the past few months, so we are able to fit 8 gigs into a budget build, which is pretty awesome. Um, so this is going to be an Intel H81 chipset for the motherboard, and uh, it will have two SATA 3GB per second ports and two SATA 6GB per second ports. However, no onboard USB 3.0 headers, but it does have onboard Ethernet, uh, but the minus to this, like I said, is going to be no onboard USB 3. That's not too much of a con, because most things you're going to plug in are not going to be USB 3 anyway. Um, for example, mouse and keyboard, those are USB 2, so it wouldn't really matter. Like I just said, we're going to be using 264GB of G-Scale Ripjaws X-Series RAM. This is going to come in at $61 from Newegg. The mass storage drive, we picked out the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive, your standard mass storage hard drive 7200 RPM, very fast, will be able to load your games relatively quickly, has plenty of storage space for your games and or recordings, as well as your Windows. We are not going to be getting an SSD for this build, simply because it's a little bit too expensive for the build and I'd rather put that money towards a GPU. Now, the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch hard drive is going to come in at $53 from Outlet PC. Next up, the video card. I want the MSI GeForce GTX 750 Ti 2GB video card coming in at $110 from Newegg with a $30 mail-in rebate. Next up, the case. I went with the Thermaltake VL8000 mid-tower case. This is going to be a pretty cheap case, $23 from Micro Center. Uh, you can probably find it other places as well. Micro Center is kind of a place where you have to actually drive to to pick it up. They have multiple locations across the country, but if you can't have one near you, you can probably buy this case online from somewhere else. It's not the best case in the world, but it is very cheap and will do the job just fine. It will house your video card and your micro ATX very, very nicely. Next up, the power supply. We have the Corsair CX 430W 80 Plus Bronze Certified Semi Modular ATX Power Supply. This is going to be a 430W power supply, and this build is actually only going to be using 200 watts, so this is going to be overkill. Uh, it's going to come in at $25. And it is an 80 plus bronze certified, which is pretty good and semi modular, so you won't be wasting too much power with this. And then your standard Samsung DVD writer SH22 for DB is coming at 15 bucks. And the power supply, like I said, is then coming at $25 for Newegg. And you're going to be getting your DVD writer from Outlet PC. This is going to be the end of this budget build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped. I hope you guys um, find it useful. And if you guys are going to be buying a PC soon and you don't have that much money, this could be the build for you. I hope you guys do it like I said for the last time. I will see you guys next time. Oh, remember, never stop learning.